our guests, so let's go ahead and get started uh, here uh, real fast on the air. So, Brian, go ahead and come over here. And uh, Mr. Tyler Baronski, uh, you're live on the air, so we don't have an ability to do an intro because of a technical thing tonight. But, uh, Tyler, uh, nice to have you on the air tonight on our additional edition of KTXF The Real uh, in, uh, Baseball in the Parkway. How you doing, my friend? Hey, doing well. How are you guys doing? We are doing good and excited for Atlantic League action to start this Thursday as the Sugarland Skeeters, for not the first time, have opened against, they are opening against the uh, Bridgeport Bluefish here at Constellation Field on 7 p.m. I apologize in advance that y'all have to watch us get the ring, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be a little tough the first game, but, uh, you know, I guess we'll, we'll get through it. But, uh, Tyler, hey, uh, first let's talk about your career a little bit. I, I had a chance to run through that. I, I t tell everybody who you are, what you do, where they can find you, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, uh, I'm a 19-year-old high school student. I do freelance reporting in the Atlantic League. Uh, I've been doing it since my fourth season now. Um, so three seasons as a freelancer with one season as affiliated with Bridgeport. I run a sports media-based YouTube channel called TBLs 512 where I post all my interviews from uh, the league and other events I do. And uh, in the past, I've also done, like, baseball vlogs to take people into kind of inside scoop of what professional baseball is like. But uh, mainly it's just where uh, my interviews go, and uh, that's where, uh, you know, I started. One of the things that I have loved about uh, the, Atlantic, the Atlantic League in general and, uh, in, 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 uh, and uh, minor league baseball being as far as being covered is the, uh, the, uh, the great uh, ch uh, chances it, it gives folks, uh, and I'm going to say not just young. You're talking to a 53-year-old and a 50, well, 55, Brian, I guess uh, it is. You got it right. <laughs> and old that uh, it gives us chances for something that on a major league level, you know, probably in most cases will not happen. And I say that in the context of, of and I want to say it in this context, is the really excellent reporting and stories that these folks are getting out. And you probably know the same thing in the other markets of the Atlantic League and other things out there here. 19-year-old, I've had an experience that I'm going to share as one of my favorite Skeeters moments later in our show tonight involving a young man that was 17, no, he was 18 at the time, and it's just a whole different story because he was a heart transplant on the list, and it's just a whole, I don't want, I don't want crying to start. No crying in baseball, James, no crying in baseball. But uh, anyway, the chances it gives for young writers, and I found so much skill from folks on both ends of the spectrum, so we are really happy to have you on tonight. And again, at the end of the program, as we finish this up, we will uh, make sure and get all your contacts out there, as we already have connected on Twitter and Facebook, et cetera, of that nature and such like that. So let's talk about the uh, the starting series a little bit. First off, uh, give us an overview of uh, of the uh, Bridgeport Bluefish starting off this year, coaching. Uh, players, Brian's going to talk to you a little bit more player-wise. I'm going to talk more about the franchise, but just give us just a quick overview of Bridgeport right now. Hey, yeah, Bridgeport, uh, they put up together a good team, a lot of new faces on this team this year, starting from the front office with new general manager and Paul Herman, all the way down to the coaching staff, new pitching coach Rich Garces, and uh, just a ton of new players this year, but I think they've built a solid ball club. One of their strengths this year, in my opinion, is their pitching staff, both uh, the, in the starting rotation and the relief uh, pitchers. I mean, our starting rotation this year is going to start off with Corey Reardon, uh, pitcher of the year in Jonathan Alba Dejo. We got Chris Reardon, who really made a transformation from relief role last year with Sugarland to starter role with Bridgeport, really found success in that starter role. And, and then, uh, he was part of that. Was he part of that trade Bridgeport last year that brought us one of our current players, I believe? I could be wrong, but uh, that's something we'll have to talk about later. Uh, so anyway, uh, 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 first, let's talk about Brian. Uh, we give a couple questions to him, but we lost our connection here. Um, mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, okay, well, uh, besides Sean Burroughs, you know, of course, anybody that's followed baseball knows that's Jeff Burroughs' son, played for the Braves. He's been a fixture in Bridgeport for two or three years now, and he's just he's fun to watch. But you start looking at the names, and I, I I see just like us, a lot of new players, and it's like who are these guys? And now we got to learn a whole bunch of new crew of people. Yeah, definitely. Well, uh, Burroughs, like you said, it's been a he's been a mainstay in Bridgeport uh, fourth season now, um, and that guy that guy just wants to win for Bridgeport. I mean, we had media day today at the ballpark, and Burroughs is just talking about. 
he's doing a player uh, coaching role this year, which is different for him. And, you know, he just talked about his desire to win in Bridgeport and a reason why he came back to Bridgeport from Long Island after finding success in Long Island. Uh, he wants to experience the same in Bridgeport. So, uh, you know, it's good to have him back. Uh, he's always a consistent player for us and uh, just a good guy overall. My, my highlights, are just to give you a background, I grew up in the Dallas Fort Worth area. And in 1972, the Washington Senators moved from uh, Washington to uh, Arlington, Texas. And my hero in that age, I was, what, seven, eight, nine years in that time, was a gentleman by the name of Mr. Jeff Burroughs, who played right field, of course. Oh, yeah. And I uh, was at Mainstay and uh, for a number of years there in Arlington before uh, going to some other teams. Uh, All-Star a couple of years there. But uh, I went out, uh, my favorite memory, though, is uh, later on when Sean was uh, in, in the uh, Little League World Series, his dad was the coach of the team, and Sean was pitching uh, for their team. I think I believe they were from California, and I will never forget that. It was I, I sat there with like my like I was a kid again watching that game with him playing, because of and that's what baseball does to me is bringing up these memories of things we remember through the years, and having Sean. I haven't got to meet with him, and we're working with the Bridgeport folks. Uh, media folks, and we've actually got uh, the skiers are working for me to be able to uh, interview him when he's here in town. So I'm really excited about that. Talk about the front office uh, changes this year a little bit. We know Bridgeport has gone through some of that, unfortunately, uh, uh, some of it in a tragic way because of the longtime uh, uh, personnel that you had there. But talk about the front office situation in Bridgeport this year. Yeah, I re- think it really starts with the general manager position. Uh, Jamie Tooley you got a new position. Uh, I don't remember where exactly. Uh, I'm not. I don't think it's in baseball anymore. I think he's in the soccer, but I, I can't remember exactly. But uh, so Paul Herman, who's been there for a while, he got promoted to the general manager position, and I think from there everyone kind of got a little bit of a promotion. And uh, you know, I'm still learning um, some names in there too. There's some new guys, a new uh, public relations, uh, I guess, manager. I'm not really sure the title, but. Uh, yeah, it just seems like there's a new group this year, and um, but they're working hard to uh, put a successful uh, Bridgeport Bluefish team. Now, for a number of years, Bridgeport has been an interesting, an interesting market, a mainstay market for the league. Uh, what is the health of the franchise uh, there? I know it's in the lower attendance market, but you're also in a unique market because you're so close to the New York uh, metropolitan area and the teams and stuff like that. Talk about the franchise itself, and uh, maybe uh, do you have any insight on some of the things they're really doing to get the uh, fan enthusiasm going in Bridgeport for the uh, fish this year? Yeah, I mean, I'll say a big attraction for, at that Bluefish Stadium is a lot of Mets fans, by Yankee Red Sox, obviously. Um, you know, they, that's why we kind of acquire a lot of former Mets and uh, Yankee Red Sox players, if you notice our little trend throughout the year. Um, because we got a lot of fans that are fans of those teams, and uh, you know they come to games and they recognize the player. Oh man, like last year, Andy Chavez. Every game you see a, a Mets fan uh, come to the stadium, want to meet Andy, get an autograph. So a lot of a lot of attraction from those teams, and then uh, a lot of promotions this year. I'll, the guest manager, um, you know, promotion has been really popular over the years. I know um, they're trying to look to do a lot of local. Uh, people, I guess local celebrities as guest managers this year to attract the local crowd. Um, but just a lot of, you know, other player signings and uh, autograph signings and just different uh, guest appearances that way. Of course, Bridgeport is known, uh, may correct me, I'm pretty sure this is the franchise that had Pete Rose for a game or so. That was part of it. And he actually came here to Sugar Land and, uh, and uh, they brought both of the teams together and he gave a talk. Uh, we're not here to talk about P. Rose, the Hall of Fame stuff, but uh, to forget that stuff, great player no matter how you look at it. And that had to be a really a cool experience to uh, have Pete there in that uh, role for a game there. And they got uh, Major League Baseball, I had no problems with it, and, and I understand it was a really uh, a successful and fun night for the fans there. Yeah, it was really cool. I was at that game, got to meet Pete, take a picture of him, talk a little bit. I got a baseball signed by him, so I mean, I was like a sophomore in high school when that happened. Uh, but, uh, sophomore in high school—that's only two years away from you. So, that was that great feeling like? We're kidding you a little bit, so. <laughs> but yeah, it was a cool day and packed house, so it was nice. And you know, we've had similar things here, of course. We're going back to Roger Clemens and a couple of things. I hear that situation. 
And uh, so talk about the uh, the skipper of your ball club a little bit. Uh, is, is he the same skipper you've had the last couple of years? Is this a returning manager? Uh, to talk about your manager a little bit. Yep, uh, our manager this year, again, is uh, Luis Machete Rodriguez. That's the nickname he acquired when uh, his playing days. Machete, known for his throwing arm. But uh, he's been with the team for, I think this is his 10th year now. Uh, he's been a player coach for a while, since 2012. And, uh, you know, second year leading the team. He has experience coaching elsewhere as well in winter ball. Uh, this past year, he's also been a coach on Team Venezuela and the World Baseball Classic. So he really has a lot of connections in the baseball world and has a good connection with the Latino players. So, um, you know, he's just a guy that loves Bridgeport, knows this team, knows this organization and city well. And, uh, Happy to have him back. So explain the uh, uh, every every uh, market in the Atlantic League when you go to a game has certain things that are a little bit different. Explain the uh, the main experience of going to Bridgeport and going to a ball game. Uh, I guess the main experience is um, you know, just look out in the scenery in Bridgeport. It's different. Uh, in right field, we got the train track that heads into New York City, goes by during the game, sometimes stops by, which is cool. Uh, you know, Beats its horn a little bit. And out on the ferry, uh, in center field, you can see Port Jefferson and also the ferry dock. And that's where Bridgeport actually takes that ferry to go to Long Island to play the Ducks sometimes. So that's that's a really unique way to go to a baseball game. And then uh, last year we got the Webster Bank Arena where a ton of concerts are held. And uh, um, the Bridgeport Sound Tigers, the minor league hockey team, plays there. So, uh, so it's got that unique fa- unique factor. We got I-95 off on uh, left field, kind of just showing the hustle and bustle of uh, Bridgeport. So uh, I guess that's what uh, makes Bridgeport stand out a little bit. I'm looking forward this year to uh, making uh, a couple of roadies uh, for a different I – ca- I can fly. It's a long story, but flying is, was a challenge for me last time I flew. And I've noticed that my, the, the great thing about not only Bridgeport, but pretty much almost every team in the league is the ability to be able to take a train there and uh, such. Uh, uh, Brian, talk to him just a little bit. Uh, uh, c- compare some of the uh, differences. Let's talk about the Atlantic League itself, uh, Brian. Uh, Brian, go you take over for just a second and ask. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other teams in the Atlantic League. Well, I know y'all are all, I think somebody had told us they're, all the stadiums are pretty much the furthest two apart are like two and a half hours apart, you know, time wise. I don't know what that is in miles up in the Northeast. But, you know, we're the only team down here, so I know that's why the schedules look so strange this year, it's because of transportation reasons. And we don't like it because, you know, nobody wants to play the same team 17 times in a row unless it's for a championship. <laughs> but but uh, how does that compare? Uh, uh, you, I assume that you do go to the other stadiums up there, uh, if, and it's fairly easy for you to get to, I assume. Um, I don't go to... Actually, a lot of the road games. I, I go to New Britain when they play New Britain, but that's really pretty much it for okay. me. I mean, I've been to Somerset and York before, but um, those are more like trips than a regular thing. Okay. You don't even want to cross the river to go to see Long Island Ducks, do you? I've never <laughs> seen Long Island yet. I'm not the biggest Ducks fan, so I guess that could tell you why. Uh, the, uh, the, the, I joke and say the reason I want to go to Long Island, Long Island is to see Quacker Jack. I want to, I, 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 a 53-year-old guy, the guy that's fascinated with the mascots of the teams. Don't ask me why. I just love the things or whatever. So let's talk Atlantic League. Uh, as, let's talk about the Atlantic League in general right now. Uh, very healthy. I, I've, I've had conversations with Rick White last Last year when he was here for the championship series against Long Island, and a lot of good things going on. Uh, uh, what uh, any? Uh, I don't want to say inside scoop is the right word, but uh, what are some of the things you're hearing about some of the other clubs this year early on? Oh, you mean like player wise? Like, well, not just player wise, franchise wise. The health of the franchises up there. We know Brit- New Britain is going to be an interesting situation because, uh, of course, they were they moved into uh, moved from Camden to New Britain, and then they actually. Uh, we're, su- we're supposed to, the whole re- thing, reason that happened was an affiliated club was being built uh, to a city next door, and that affiliated club uh, stadium did not get completed, so they had that entire market the whole year. And uh, I'm curious to see how that uh, how it affects their uh, second year coming. But uh, just an impression of the, uh, the, the franchise as a whole and the league as a whole. Yeah, I mean, the league's definitely growing. Uh, you know, the big thing I noticed about this league uh Every team kind of has like a media coverage of some sort, which is just shows the growth of this league. You know, every team has got a live stream or some TV coverage, and uh, 
you know, its own little, um, you know, media crew. So, like, you know, you definitely see this league growing, the fan base is growing, um, better players coming in the league. So it's just, um, just the league continues to increase in uh, population. Let me ask you about that, the media side, real fast, because Bridgeport was one of the few teams that did not send a radio coverage person for their teams uh, for a, number, a couple of years here. Uh, do you know if they have plans to cover their way games? Or are they just going to rely on the coverage? Uh, as in, you know, we're, we're, you know we, we've had the ESPN3 coverage, which we're talking about. That's been changed. But do you all just kind of rely on the other team's coverage uh, of your games on the road? Uh, not necessarily. They had a live stream last year. They would also bring it to road games. So I'm pretty sure they're continuing that this year with the live stream. It worked pretty well. Um, you know, it's nothing like that ESPN3 coverage from last year, but I know you guys don't have that this year. But, uh, I mean, it's good though. Every team, the home teams have the live stream as well. And then, you know, fans can look at the Bridgeport live stream if they want to hear, you know, uh, Michael Moore, the Bluefish announcer. Yes, we all have that. Here we have Shane, and uh, you know each team kind of gets a uh, a voice as far as the PA, and then of course we have Ira Liebman, who's the uh, the play by play main voice for the uh, uh, Skeeters. Uh, who does play by play primarily when it's on the air for the Bluefish? Yeah, Michael Moore. He's uh, the announcer for the Bluefish. He's been there for a while. Uh, does a great job, a great guy, and uh, I worked with him when I worked for that team in 2015, and he's just a good individual. So uh, me and Brian will be doing this later on at the end of our show. I want to ask you, and I don't know if you can, if five's too many, but I want you to uh, tell me some of your favorite uh, Bridgeport, Bluefish, Atlantic League moments. Uh, uh, they don't, and they don't have to do anything with base. I told Brian. Most of my list has nothing to do with actual plays of baseball, but what are some of the most fa- uh, your favorite moments you've had in uh, being at a uh, uh, Bridgeport Bluefish uh, game? Okay. Uh, probably won't be in uh, order like one through five. I'll, I'll try to think of five memories. Um, when they won the Fairy Cup, I don't know if you know what the Fairy Cup is. It's our, like, kind of our series rival against the uh, Ducks and then whoever wins the most amount of games in that between the Ducks and Bluefish in the year, uh, you get the Fairy Cup uh, trophy, which is kind of a big deal uh, here in Bridgeport and Long Island. And when I worked for that team in 2015, we won the Fairy Cup, and you know, it was really cool celebrating with the players and just like seeing everyone's reaction. So that was a cool memory. Uh, we got a trophy for that, a little trophy, but a trophy. <laughs> um, Trophy's a trophy. It doesn't you matter. So you, you, know. you take what you get. <laughs> yeah, take what you get. Uh, that was a cool memory. Uh, Pete Rose game is a good memory because it was just cool you seen the TV coverage ESPN was there uh, just seeing the ballpark filled I've never seen the ballpark so filled before um, so that was just a cool memory for me uh, some of my top memories are just some of the players I've met so I think when Dontrell Willis was with us he was a really cool guy and really talkative and one of my first interviews I ever did and he was more than willing to help me out and he's just a guy I've been watching for years and the actually meet him in person, talk with him, kind of become friends with him. That was a, that was a good memory I have. Um, i trying to think some other. Oh, Atlantic League All-Star game was in Bridgeport. That yes. was a big one. Mm-hmm. That was a really cool day. It rained that day, unfortunately. I think that kind of scared some fans. But it was cool seeing, like, different the different team fans come. You see guys, fans from Lancaster, fans from York, fans definitely from Long Island. So... See, that mix was pretty unique, and I guess the fifth memory off the top of my head is uh, the Red Sox-Yankees Legends game we had a couple years ago after the All-Star game. Former Red Sox and Yankee players coming for one day just to, you know, kind of compete and uh, just really for the fans to see some of their, uh, you know, childhood heroes. Doc Gooden started the game. Uh, You got guys like on the Red Sox side, Bill Lee, Marty Barrett, uh, Oyo can Boyd, so um, that was a cool day as well to meet some of those guys and uh, see that happen. I think that's all that. I think a lot of the things that you've shared are good, a great example of why we love this league, the Atlantic League. You know, people. And one of the questions I had for uh, the Skeeters president, uh, 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 Jay Miller, was, you know, there's always this controversy about us being so far down, and there's been the expansion talk, la da da, and such. And there's always been talk, you know, you hear, you, you read the independent league blogs and stuff like that. I'm sure you're involved with that. And they're always like, why is this Texas team in this league in the Northeast? 
And it was very clear, there's no doubt that the, the Skeeters are long-term in this league, and I'm very happy about that because of the quality and of these experiences, just like you mentioned, that we were able to take a part of. Tyler, again, to tell folks how they can get a hold of you, uh, watch your YouTube channel and such, and we will be reposting this, of course, on our Facebook pages and Twitter. But one more time, go through how folks can get through you, read your stories, see your interviews and such through the year. Sure, absolutely. Well, my YouTube channel is TB Autos 512. That's T B A U T O S, and then the number is 512. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Ty Baronski 10. That's T Y B O R O N S K I 10. And then my Facebook page for my interviews is TB Autos 512 Interviews. So just like the YouTube name, add interviews to it, and you got the Facebook page. So. Well, Tyler, I hope this is not the last time we talk. I look forward to actually talking with you. Maybe we can set this up every series back and forth a little bit, and especially as we get a feel for the teams going forward. Tyler, thank you so much. We look forward to maybe make a roadie. Maybe I'll even get to see you a little bit going up there in the Bluefish Bridgeport area. I would like to see the area. Maybe maybe I can't have a brewski with you yet. You're not old enough, so... <laughs> Maybe you can talk to yeah. yeah, maybe you can talk to fish into bringing you on a roadie. <laughs> it's such, but thank yeah. you so much, and uh, we appreciate you being on this first edition, this historic edition of baseball in the Parkway. We'll be back in just a few moments. We've got uh, more about the Skeeter.